How can you combine your consciousness with Krishna's consciousness or with Christ's consciousness or with Buddhist consciousness if you are groveling there in mud and that consciousness is so high, so beyond you that you cannot grasp it for the moment. But please remember, it is not impossible. It is there. You have it within you in totality. And the more troubled your mind is, the more doubtful you become of that consciousness. Less would you recognize that divine consciousness that permeates through every pore, every cell of a spiritual master. Whose fault is it? If I am jaundiced, I will see everything yellow. Hmm? Is everything yellow around me? It is not. It is my eyes that are jaundiced that makes me see everything yellow, everything in its negative sense. Everything is rubbish, rubbish. Hmm? So through spiritual practice, you rise above your small little conceptions. I don't ask you to believe me. I ask you to doubt me. Always. I've never, in thousands and thousands of talks around the world, asked anyone to believe me. But I've asked one thing. Experience yourself. Then you will experience that consciousness which is your birthright. You are a child of the divine. You are divine. You are it all. But when the mental faculties get mixed up, when there is no synaptic control between the left hemisphere of the brain and the right hemisphere of the brain, you get into this muddle. And what is the muddle? Your own mind. Your own mind is in a muddle. That does not make you realize that consciousness. And I promise you one thing, here and now, that if Christ or Krishna or Buddha should walk down the road, you will pass him by and not recognize him. Because you haven't got that consciousness to recognize that Christ or that Buddha or that Krishna. So through spiritual practices, through meditation, through prayers, you heighten yourself. Now, what do you mean by heightening yourself? You, through your practices, reach a higher vibratory state that could conjoin, enjoin in the confluence of those rivers that meet the river 
of a heightened consciousness of Christ. And your consciousness also heightens itself to the level where there's this confidence. And then, you are Christ. You are Buddha. You are divinity. You are it all. And when that realization dawns through experience and not by mental antagonisms, mental turmoils, mental turbulences, then you find the deep peace within for which Everyone seeks. There will never ever be peace in the mind. Forget it. There will always be conflicts. One thought will pull this way and another thought will pull that way. And hmm? These things happen all the time. Now, what do you do about it? You create a balance. A balance and integration of body, mind and spirit. Not fragmentation. Because that is where people live in. Fragmentation. And not integration because when you are integrated within yourself the question of divinity could never arise because you feel within yourself that you are divine and when you realize your own divinity within yourself you will see the divinity everywhere in these lovely trees, with this wonderful symphony, the wind blowing through it, the grass swaying, in such an ecstatic dance. Now, when you go beyond all this and transcend the mind and the body, you reach that stage of impersonality, the impersonal God, where I do not exist, you do not exist, only the impersonal God exists. Hmm? And what is the impersonal God? You want to know? Really? Do you want to know? He is nothing. Absolute nothing. Just an energy. And that energy has to manifest itself. A flower, as I said many times before, has to give off fragrance. Fire has to give off heat. It is the nature of the unmanifest to manifest itself so that this universe could function. And how does it start? It does not start from will, because will requires a mind, and God is mindless. That impersonal God is mindless, just an energy, which you, with your free will, could use in whichever way. You want. 
So, from the emanation that comes from the manifesta, like heat coming from fire, it takes form, it solidifies through various atomic and molecular processes. And this solidification, multiplicating itself, <coughs> duplicating itself, replicating itself, and meeting with so many other forces from the first cycle of this creation. Hmm? For creation moves in cycles. From manifestation, remember this, comes creation. Because these forces that are involved from the Big Bang, when this universe started, they started mixing each other in various forms and ways, and that is how evolution started right from the mineral to the plant to the animal and to you who call yourself human beings. I said somewhere the other day, I don't know where, human beings. <sighs> Beans. <laughs> B-E-A-N-S. Beans. Senseless. Totally damn senseless. Yet within the bean, there is the same molecular structure. There's the same force, the same energy that is within that impersonal God. So the impersonal God personifies himself for the purpose of creation. So first there is manifestation. Manifestation starts with the subtle force of mind. And that subtle force of mind in conjunction with its own ramifications concretizes itself and that forms creation. And then in the process of creation, through evolution, it goes through all these various phases and stages to make you what you are today. There are not two people here in this room that is alike. Like fingerprints. There are no two fingerprints alike. 